Hi, this is Mike, WB4HUC, and today uh, I wanted to make a video, just a short one, about a new antenna that I put up a little over a week ago. So my HF antenna for a couple of years now has been a ZS6BKW multiband wire antenna, which is a modified uh, version of a G5RV. It will operate four or five bands without a tuner. On the other bands, uh, you do need a tuner, and you need a wide-range tuner, something that can handle more than a three-to-one SWR mismatch. I have an L-Craft station, so I have an L-Craft K4 with the KPA500 amplifier and the KET500 tuner, and the KET500 tuner will handle, according to L-Craft, up to a 10-to-one SWR mismatch. And so will the internal tuner in the K4. My K4 has the internal tuner, and it will also handle uh, a wide uh, SWR mismatch. So uh, we'll just start out by looking at the antenna. Ignore the mess around the bottom uh, where I was working when I installed it. But this is the antenna. So there's a steel pipe buried in the ground for the base. A DX Engineering Omni Tilt, uh, the stationary part bolted to the base of the antenna, and a mast bolted into the tilt over part of the uh, Omni Tilt. The mast is 10 feet in length because I wanted to get the base up high enough that I wouldn't go out in my yard and somehow or other poke myself in the eye with these counterpoise uh, elements. So there are six, 100 inch from here to here is about 100 inches. There are six of these 100 inch uh, counterpoise elements around the base of the antenna. Just underneath the counterpoise elements is an unun that connects to the antenna. And then above that are the aluminum tubing pieces that make up the vertical piece of the antenna. These are just telescoping uh, pieces of aluminum tubing. One above telescopes into the one below and then they're held together or you tighten down these hose clamps to uh, hold them in place. So the antenna was pretty easy to put together even though it's uh, pretty tall. From the top here to the bottom is about 40 feet. So the uh, there's uh, what half a foot or a foot between here and the ground. Then this mast is 10 feet in length. Then the antenna, I believe, is 27 feet tall. So the whole thing's almost 40 feet tall. And then about 200 inches from one side to the other. So it takes up some space, but there's nothing to adjust. There's no traps or coils. You just put it together and you get what you get. And I chose this on purpose instead of a vertical antenna that required counterpoise wires on the ground just because I didn't want to do the work of having to lay out hundreds of feet of counterpoise wires on the ground. Um, I just wanted something that I could put together and put up and use, and this is it. So the one thing you'll notice is the coax doesn't come all the way to the ground. There's 100 feet of coax feeding this antenna. So from the un, -un coming down the mast and back to the house is 100 feet of DX Engineering's DXE 400 Max. And it turned out uh, it's two or three feet short, actually. You can see it doesn't come all the way to the ground before it goes the way to the house. It starts a couple of feet off the ground and then comes away from the mast. Well, out here in Central Texas, when you dig a hole, you're probably going to hit rock. So the first two or three holes that I started, I hit rock, and I kept moving the hole. And eventually I ended up moving it a little bit further away than the original hole where I measured all this out. So it ended up uh, that the coax couldn't come all the way across the ground and then go up. So probably what I'll do is add a three or four foot uh, piece of coax to jumper these two together. I'll cut the coax 
somewhere around here so that it will come down to the ground and then I'll put a three or four foot jumper to connect it to the other piece uh, just to get it all lying on the ground and and then I can cut a slit uh, a little trench uh, and stuff the coax an inch or two down to get it out of the way of the lawnmower so that's still to be done I still need to put some more concrete in this hole I need to cover up these other holes that I started to dig so there's some still some work to be done and uh, but but basically the antenna is up and it's working and so far I've been pretty pleased with it so that's the antenna and uh, I ran uh, some SWR plots using my rig expert antenna analyzer and I have software you can connect the analyzer to the computer and run software and it will read the data from the analyzer so I've done that so here's the SWR plots so this one is uh, 6 meters from 50 megahertz to 50.5 megahertz and obviously this is without the antenna tuner in line this is just measuring the antenna directly and the SWR is about 1.2 to 1 and it rises to a little bit above that uh, at 50.5 megahertz so the antenna works on six meters without a tuner it's not the best six meter antenna in the world but this past weekend the band was open and I did make uh, a CW contact and some FT8 contacts as far away as 12 or 1300 miles so I won't get started on my rant of how I think that uh, FT8 has sort of ruined six meters for CW and SSB contacts that's a different that's a topic for a different time but I did make contacts and uh, it does work so there you go and then the next plot is 10 meters from 28 megahertz to 28.5 and we can see it starts about 3.6 or 3.8 to 1 and goes down as you go up towards 28.5 so we cover the again the CW portion uh, CW beacons uh, SSB portion and even well the AM portion is further up but uh, we can cover the first 500 uh, kilohertz of the band and probably more with uh, here in this plot I'm sorry and I do need the tuner so same for uh, this is the 12 meter plot it's 100 kilohertz of 12 meters with about 3.6 to 1 from one end to the other so I need the tuner same with 15 meters from 21 to 21.450 starts out at what 4 to 1 more or less and drops as you go higher but not much so tuners required here uh, again 3.6 to 1 on the 17 meter plot for the 100 kilohertz of that band pretty straight line uh, from one end to the other so again the tuners needed here 20 meters uh, 3.5 to 1 maybe 3.4 to 1 all the way across from 14 to 14 350 so tuner needed uh, 4.6 4.7 to 1 on 30 meters and of course that's only 50 kilohertz but still need the tuner and then 40 meters at the low end at 7 megahertz uh, 1.5 to 1 maybe 1.4 1.6 1 1.456 I'm not sure what these graduations are but 1.5 to 1 give or take and it rises to uh, maybe 1.8 to 1 at the high end so technically no tuner needed but once I cross this line where it starts rising I probably would use the tuner but technically no tuner needed on uh, 40 meters or 6 meters and tuner needed on all the other bands so those are the plots and I guess that's all I'll have for this particular video um, and I'll try to keep them short in uh, future videos I do have some recordings I made uh, 
CW beacons and CW signals and, and uh, phone signals at different times of the day and different conditions to, to demonstrate one antenna versus the other. And I made some observations, but probably no conclusions. Um, there's no general rule to follow that says one antenna, one antenna is always better than the other, of course. But the thing is, I do have the choice. So I can switch to whichever antenna is working better for that particular station at that particular time. And that's probably the, the best we can say. And that's really what I was after. So just have a difference that I could uh, compare to and, and another antenna that I could go to if I needed. What I really want to do is see how this thing does as a DX antenna. And I haven't really investigated that yet. So that'll be in the future as well. Anyway, I just wanted to show the antenna and uh, just sort of introduce it. And in the future, I'll make two or three more videos uh, that just show, show the antenna in operation. So for now, that's it. Uh, as always, thank you for watching.